All right, I think we are all good. Uh, so first of all, welcome everyone to uh, another WebFeet webinar. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Justin Marshall and I am the Director of Social Media Marketing here at uh, WebFeet Complete. Um, and today we're gonna talk a, a little bit about social media. Um, and I think it's kind of funny we uh, call these uh, presentations, uh, you know, social media simplified. A couple weeks ago, Ray did an SEO simplified uh, webinar. And uh, if you know anything about SEO, or if you know nothing about SEO, you know that it's anything but uh, simple. And the same can be said for social media. While uh, on its surface, it's, you know, it seems easy and uh, you know, not super difficult to to uh, comprehend. Uh, there are a lot of advanced uh, strategies and tactics that go along with social media that really um, will help your business grow um, in some meaningful way. So, you know, before jumping into it, um, just want to talk a little bit about who we are. Um, so we were founded in 1999, which uh, that makes us one of the oldest and uh, also largest digital agencies in Cincinnati. And uh, Michelle, our owner, likes to uh, joke that we, uh, we're older than Google, so we kind of have a leg up on even uh, Google at this point. Um, so, you know, we have over 20 years of digital design and SEO experience covering uh, the gamut of digital marketing services, so website design, SEO, obviously social media, uh, you know, content creation, and, and even video production, um, and, and website hosting as well. So chances are, if it's, uh, it's online, um, then, then we can handle it. Uh, so I just want to talk about the agenda real quick. So this is kind of uh, a high-level uh, agenda about the topics we're going to be discussing today. Uh, so we're going to cover, first of all, um, why social media is so crucial for your digital success. Um, and then we're going to go into how to create your own social media audit. Uh, and then, you know, after you've done that, we're going to talk about the ideal, uh, ideal social, social media post. Uh, we're going to talk about some trends in both 2020 uh, and beyond uh, 2020. And then we're going to... Um, start to close it out by talking about how social media, uh, SEO, and content creation all really complement each other uh, and work together to kind of give you the um, that full service uh, digital marketing attack uh, that we're looking for. And then uh, if we have time at the very end, we're going to um, share some uh, social uh, media tools that will really help you uh, manage all of the um, things we talked about in the presentation. So uh, let's jump into that. Uh, so we're gonna start with a question. And this is actually a question I ask all of our uh, uh, clients that come in to discuss you know, um, starting up a, a social media uh, campaign with us. And you know, the question is, why aren't you already actively using social media? Uh, so you know, what's your barrier for entry? Or if you know you're kind of um, kind of doing social media, but not really uh, to its full extent, uh, you know why why can't you or why aren't you um, already doing that? So hopefully by the end of the uh, presentation, um, we're gonna be able to answer that question. And I'm gonna I'm actually gonna tell you the number one answer that I receive from those meetings on on why they aren't or or can't to their um, the the best uh, extent. Uh, engage in social media. So uh, why is social media important for business? Well, there's a lot of reasons, um, but I just want to you know, talk about kind of the most important ones. Uh, the first and foremost is it increases your business's brand awareness. Uh, it can help attract new customers. It's a really cost efficient form of marketing um, and free in most cases. Um, a form of marketing, uh, supports your SEO efforts, it supports your sales efforts, and then you can also gather a lot of really useful 
uh, customer insights and customer analytics from, from these social networks. Uh, and then lastly, this one kind of ties into um, brand awareness, but it just, it keeps your business top of mind. So, you know, if someone's seeing your business across social media and then they see your business somewhere else, um, you know, they can, um, you know, trigger that um, where they had seen you before on social media. And it just really keeps you, you top of mind uh, to your customer base. Uh, with that being said, uh, the, really the first step that you're going to want to uh, take is, you know, taking an audit of what you're currently doing on social media or not doing on social media. Um, and, you know, this is, this is really the first step that I take um, as well with pers prospective uh, clients is, is creating that audit to kind of um, get that baseline of uh, where your current social campaigns stand. Um, and to do this, you're gonna to have to ask yourself some questions. Um, so first, you know, what are your uh, social media goals? Uh, where's your target audience spending time? Uh, what's your competition using? Um, you know, what kind of content do you wanna post on social media? Um, and then finally, probably the most important is how many channels, uh, social channels can you actually manage? Um, and, and we're gonna discuss why that's you know, probably the most important uh, part of this audit. Uh, so the first question, uh, what, are your, what are your social goals? Um, so if your, uh, you know, your main goal is to simply increase brand awareness, um, you know, maybe you want to use Facebook or Instagram because they're the largest, most established um, social channels and, and, you know, the most people use them and those are best for brand awareness purposes. Um, if you decide that your main goal is to increase sales leads, you know, maybe LinkedIn is a better option for you because they're, they're really the best at the lead gen um, um, across social channels. Or maybe it's simply to provide support uh, to your customer base. Um, if that's the case, then, you know, Twitter is best in class in customer support. So, you know, maybe you want to be on Twitter um, um, most as well as some of the other channels. So you want to uh, really document and write down uh, what your goals are first. Uh, and from there, we can move on to uh, the next parts of the audit, um, which are, you know, what's, uh, where's your target audience spending the most time across uh, social media? So you're gonna have to do a little research. Uh, you're gonna have to define and document who your target audience is. Um, you know, this could be from pulling from your current customer base and, and uh, seeing who your demographics are and who your, your uh, target audience really should be. Um, and then from there, you can uh, move on and, and see uh, what the demos are across all of these channels. So. These are a few examples of some, some example demographics across social channels. So uh, Facebook, for example, is really skewed to a little older age groups. Um, and, and there's uh, primarily um, or majority women uh, on Facebook. Uh, Instagram is a little bit younger in that 18 to 35 year old range. Uh, Twitter, um, one of their demographics is they have higher household incomes. So if that's the target audience that you uh, are trying to capture, then you know Twitter could be your choice. Uh, Pinterest is heavily skewed towards women, uh, and they're also more likely to be college educated. And then LinkedIn kind of uh, fulfills that mid-range age group, and they're also uh, much more likely to be um, educated um, or professionals um, or even businesses. Um, so you have to really find your demographic and then uh, decide which of these social networks should be your primary focus. Uh, next is you have to look at what your competition is using. Uh, so you want to do some more research and, you know, see who your primary uh, competitors are uh, using. Um, an easy way to do this is to simply do a Google search for your competitor, uh, visit their website, and then they should all uh, have their social profiles listed either at the top in the header or at the bottom in the footer, just click through um, and see what channels they're using. This is also a great way to, if you're just starting up your social campaigns, to 
kind of get some ideas on the ways that your competitors are using social media. Um, so if you, you know, you, you list your competitors, you see what they're using, and then you kind of scroll through their feeds, uh, it's a great way to, to really see how you can be utilizing uh, these, um, these same channels that they are. Uh, and then you have to decide the type of content you're going to be posting. So maybe you just want to be posting company updates, uh, company news, or some white papers. Um, you know, LinkedIn and SlideShare are great for these types of, of content. Uh, and they offer a lot of great tools uh, for you to be posting these types of content. Uh, say you have a ton of videos um, or you want to make it a lot of videos. If that's the case, YouTube is your spot. Uh, they're the world's second largest search engine. Uh, so that's something that you definitely want to be utilizing. Um, and Instagram, they are really pushing their new focus on long, uh, long form videos. So uh, you want to try and uh, utilize Instagram. They're also the fastest growing social channel. So it's you know, really more important to be on um, a channel like uh, Instagram. Or, you know, if you kind of want to cover it all and do, you know, uh, images, videos, uh, news updates, um, you know, Facebook really still is the go-to uh, social network for um, a, a multiple um, types of content. And then lastly, um, I said it was probably the most important, and that's how many channels can you uh, utilize or can you... Uh, manage. So the statistic here is 91% of, of brands utilize more than two channels. Um, however, if you only have time for one or two channels um, and, and really have the bandwidth to, um, to handle you know, just a couple of channels, then you're better off doing that. You're better off finding the two channels where you get the uh, best performance and the most traction and the most engagement, and then really focus on those and perfect those. Um, it's better to, to, you know, be able to do a hundred percent on those two channels than it is to do, you know, 50% on more than, than a couple channels. So you have to really think about how many channels you can, you can even handle. Um, you know, you just don't necessarily want to be on a channel just because you have to be, or you're, supposed to be on a channel. Um, if, if it's, you know, if you're not really utilizing it properly, then it can actually hurt you more than, than help you. Okay, so, uh, so we've done our audit um, and, you know, we kind of see where we want to be, uh, um, what channels or what we should be posting um, and, and things like that. Now we, have to decide, um, you know, how to, to correctly and, and most efficiently um, create a social media post. Um, there's uh, a few guidelines that, um, you know, I use to craft a post uh, across social media. Um, and I think a member, my team, I actually, there's a blog on this as well, if you want to learn more information um, about how to, to craft the most efficient social media post. Um, and there's 10 items that I look at when I am doing this. And so if you wanna, you know, take note of these and, and kinda um, reference it when you're doing your own posts, um, it makes it really easy uh, to follow along. So the first is you wanna be concise and you wanna be to the point. So when you're writing your captions, which are the, um, this section up here above the uh, the media, uh, less is usually more. So the reason for this is that, first of all, people don't want to read a lot. Um, they don't have time. Uh, they're just scrolling through social media. Uh, you want to get your point across with the least amount of uh, words as possible. And then the second part is, if you write too much, like this post over here, uh, these social channels don't even display the entire message. So while you may have a lot of important information um, in that post, a user is gonna be required to have to click um, the see more button to even see the entire post. So uh, the first uh, part of this is, you know, the less 
text um, is usually better. Uh, number two is to always have a visual on your posts. So this really goes along with the number one point. Uh, so because you're being as concise and to the point as possible, you want to have a visual to display the rest of the message you're trying to tell. So in this case, HBO Max, they have a good, short, concise message. And then below that, they tell the rest of the story with the image. So they're showing uh, what, uh, what they're offering through their images. And you know, that's just um, an easier way to consume the, the content for the user. Uh, the second reason for this is, and it's gonna get brought up a few times in this presentation, is uh, you wanna satisfy the algorithm. So if you don't know what an algorithm is, there's a little definition down here. Uh, essentially, the algorithm is the almighty power that decides who sees your posts, how many times, uh, where they see them. And you know, it's, it's based on these social channel, channels, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so if you have a visual in your post, that will help uh, more people see your um, content because um, the algorithm uh, rewards posts that have a visual um, contained in them. And, and that's something, those are the two, the two people that we wanna satisfy on social media are the users and the algorithm. So that's, a, that's really a theme you wanna keep in mind. Uh, number three is um, the less text in an image, the better. So again, the algorithms do not like a ton of text in an image. Uh, and this is because we haven't quite fully got to the point of a, you know, a computer being able to read text in an image um, accurately. So because these, um, you know, Facebook specifically uh, can't read what's in an image, uh, they're gonna err on the side of caution and, and not show that post to as many people because they don't know if you're writing some inflammatory thing in the post or violating their terms of service um, or, or whatever the case is. So they're gonna err on the side of caution and maybe show that post to fewer people. Um, and then second, users don't like it either. Um, it goes back to, they just don't like to read um, or they don't have time to read it. So, you know, uh, a post with an image with the least amount of text inside of it as possible uh, is preferred. Number four is to keep note of your uh, image and video sizes across these channels. Each channel has a different uh, optimal image size. Uh, this is just a cheat sheet that I uh, refer to every once in a while. There, there's a few of them on the internet. You just do a Google search for it. Um, you can find a, a different versions. Um, this one's a, a little more straightforward and to the point, but you know, you just want to really make sure you're following the optimal image guidelines across whatever channel you're using. Number five is to always have some sort of call to action or CTA in your posts. Uh, so for example, this post here, they, they have a, a great image, they have uh, their caption, and then here at the end they say, DM us for pricing, uh, or direct message us for pricing. So, you know, they, they're showing off what it is that they wanna show off, they're telling us what it is, and then they're giving us a way to uh, get more info about uh, this particular post. So a CTA is, is really good because it puts that, um, that instruction into a user's head um, and it really gives them something to do to learn more information about what your post is about. Um, so it, it's really good for engagement. So um, it, the more engagement a particular post gets, the more the algorithm likes it, uh, thus it will boost your post up. So it's not only for uh, good for users to learn inf um, more information or to take an action, it's again, it's good for the algorithm. Number six here is to uh, make sure you're, you're using uh, hashtags and I put in uh, parentheses here um, appropriately. Um, so don't get carried away with your hashtags. Um, when you're doing hashtags, you wanna make sure that they're relevant 
on brand hashtags. You don't want to uh, be using any irrelevant hashtags um, because you know hashtags are great for uh, discoverability. So they're really great ways for a user to discover your profile. And if you're using irrelevant hashtags, um, then you're going to be showing up for irrelevant users and you're not going to be attracting the, the correct types of people. Uh, not only that, these social networks don't like this kind of black hat practice. And if they realize you're trying to, um, what's called hashtag hijack, um, they're going to, they're going to ding you for that. So just something to keep in mind, make sure when you're using hashtags, make sure they're relevant and, um, um, on brand. So number seven is more of a, an overall strategy than it is a, a post, um, a post by post strategy. And this is really useful if you get into your social campaigns and you're having trouble trying to decide how much or what types of things you, sh you should be posting. Uh, and this is the rule of thirds. So this is something that I follow when I'm working uh, with our clients at WebFeet. So the, the rule of thirds is you should be posting uh, a one third salesy content, one third informative content, and then a third uh, miscellaneous content. Uh, salesy content is anything like the post that I talked about with the call to actions or any information about your services or promotions or specials. Uh, informative content is content such as any blogs you've written on your website um, or any type of content that is really useful or um, benefits the user in some way that they, they can um, use on their own. And then uh, miscellaneous content is any kind of fun items like quotes or, or memes or, or gifs um, that, that you find funny or you think your followers would find funny. Uh, so, you know, if you're stuck, just, just think about this rule of thirds. And um, if you kind of broadly follow that, then uh, your content will be good to go. Uh, number eight is to utilize uh, stories. And I'm actually gonna get a little bit more into stories in the trends area. Uh, but for now, if you know what a story is, you should make sure that you are utilizing them. Um, so a story is ephemeral, which means, you know, it doesn't last. It, is a type of content that you post and um, you know last for 24 hours and, and the reason you should be utilizing them is right now they garner the most engagement across any type of content on any type of uh, social channel there is right now um, these are the big thing and you need to make sure that you're utilizing them because um, they get so much engagement and so many views All right, so number nine is, um, again, along the same lines uh, as stories, I'm gonna touch on it a little bit more in the trends, but you wanna make sure you're using video, and furthermore, you wanna make sure you're using live video. Um, so all of these social channels are really getting into the video um, content space, and as such, they, are now rewarding pages and posts that are using video. So if you look here, there's even a section, and this is Facebook, but there's the same sections across all channels. Um, there's a, a section dedicated solely to live videos. So if someone were to do a search and um, whatever pertaining to whatever your industry is or your, your product or service, uh, your video has a chance to show up in that search. So we want to make sure that we're really as much as possible utilizing video um, and, you know, utilizing live video. And I'm going to touch on the types of things you can, you can um, do to create those live videos uh, here in a second. Um, and then last is, you know, once you have all of your, um, steps covered and you went ahead and you posted what you're going to post, uh, the job doesn't end there. So number 10 is you want to make sure you're keeping up with your post and interacting with the users. So that means replying to the comments on your posts, um, you know, liking comments on your posts. Um, and this is for a couple of reasons. Again, it satisfies the user and it satisfies the algorithm. 
So if these channels see that there's a lot of comments on a post and you're replying to these comments, there's a lot of likes, there's a lot of shares, there's a lot of clicks, whatever it may be, uh, that tells and signals the algorithms that this post must be worthwhile and we want to show it to um, even more users because um, you know all of these people are liking and commenting so we think other people are going to like and comment so engagement is really key uh, after the fact um, you know after you post um, to your to your profiles um, it's, it's really key to keep your uh, posts um, rising in those uh, social channels okay so um, I did now want to kind of dive into uh, some trends that you should keep an eye on in 2020 and even beyond 2020. Um, so these are things that you should uh, pay attention to and, and research and really try and implement as much as you can into your social uh, strategies. Um, and the first one is uh, social media groups and more specifically, um, right now, Facebook and LinkedIn groups. So a group is a channel uh, that you can create around a particular um, topic or a discussion item. Uh, so for example, we have our own group, Shameless Plug, here. If you want to join, uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, but it's a Cincinnati digital marketing group. So this is a group that we created where, you know, whether you're a professional or you're a business owner um, or, you know, a novice or an advanced um, uh, social media marketer, uh, you know, anyone can come into this group, join the group and just discuss digital marketing, um, you know, in the Cincinnati area. This isn't a place where, you know, web feet per se is, uh, selling our particular services, uh, but it's more a place for, well, like I said, people to gather and talk about uh, a particular topic. Um, so again, you know, the, the, the biggest reason for this is that groups are getting prioritization in Facebook. Um, you know, even in the, the newest versions of their apps, uh, both LinkedIn and Facebook, there's dedicated tabs for these groups. Um, you know, a user can just simply click on a tab, and find a group that they're interested in. Uh, if they find yours, then more likely more people will find it uh, and the ball just kind of keeps rolling. So, you know, you just want to um, make sure that your group isn't too salesy and pushy um, and it's really, um, you know, revolving around that topic that everyone really wants to, to discuss. Uh, and then back to stories. So if you don't know what a story is, uh, I can kind of show you. So this is the Instagram app. And then down here is your main feed. And then up here uh, on the top is what are called stories. Uh, these are coming out across all channels. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter um, is even now starting to do them. And I think LinkedIn is now starting to do them as well. And uh, the, the reason is they get the, the best engagement. So uh, you will find a story up here. And the reason a story is so effective is because it really creates that, uh, that sense to a user that they really need to see this post before it goes away. Um, and then also because story posts are generally more freeform and creative, uh, quick, fun, to the point. There's not really guidelines on what you should be posting. You know, you can post uh, polls. Uh, you can post interactive questions. So for example, this is Kings Island and you know, you can physically touch on this button and slide it back and forth and, and to show how excited you are about whatever the post is. Um, and, and the engagement rates on these are, are out of control. So, you know, you really just want to, to kind of make sure when you, when you're starting your social campaigns, that stories are, uh, a bullet point on that strategy. Uh, and then again, back to a uh, live video. Uh, and the reason this is a, this is a current trend and, and it's going to only continue to get bigger. Um, and the reason that it's such a big trend right now is because 
it provides your followers um, or your customers or uh, users with a perspective that they've never seen before. Um, you know, they're really great for behind the scenes. So if you're a restaurant or if you're um, a manufacturer of something and you go live, you can, you know, go behind the scenes and show someone how something's getting made or how something is getting produced or how you do a particular process. Um, and this is just content that users love to see and it gets a really great engagement. Um, and then again, that algorithm comes back. Uh, if you're doing live video, the social channels are going to see that and they're gonna bump up your profile um, for more people to see. So um, again, you know, yeah, great for behind the scenes. They're great for events. If you're holding an event um, and you go live at your event, uh, now people that maybe couldn't have uh, attended your event can can virtually attend your event. Um, you know, how to's, um, like I said, how, how to do a specific um, process or make something. And then Q and A's. Um, a lot of businesses do these Q and A's with their owners or employees or even some customers. They will go live and, and do these really cool, authentic um, live videos. So just uh, keep live video uh, in mind when, when you're starting up your um, your own social campaigns. And then social commerce, um, this is actually probably um, in the earliest stages of trends. Um, so social commerce is uh, selling your products or your services directly on a social media platform. Um, you know, the these platforms are starting to build um, integrations into their, um, you know, their apps and websites where you can, uh, a business can sell their product and their ser service to someone without them ever having to leave the app. So for example here, Bouquet Restaurant posted this picture of this little girl wearing um, a piece of their merchandise. She's wearing a hat. Uh, and then they were able to tag that product and a user would be sent to the product page where they could get more info and then they could actually uh, buy the hat. Um, and this is all still with inside the Facebook app. You know, they can buy the app with ever, without ever having to leave. Um, and then, you know, if they wanted to see more products, there's dedicated shop pages on uh, the profile as well. Um, and the reason this is um, a really big benefit is A, it's tightly integrated and you don't have to leave. Uh, the website you're already on. So maybe someone doesn't want to visit another website, you know, like your website. Um, and then also they're built and managed by these uh, social channels. So you don't have to worry about upkeep um, with your website. So you don't have to worry about an e-commerce website. Um, if you just really want to um, sell within, um, within the different social channels. Um, so, you know, Pinterest has been doing this for a really long time. Um, they have made buying um, on their, their uh, channel really easy. Uh, Facebook is really picking up steam. Uh, Twitter, you can do it to an extent as well. Um, and then I actually did this presentation before um, uh, Facebook made an announcement yesterday um, that they're really picking up the pace with Facebook shops. So what Facebook shops is, is you can now uh, sync all of your products that you have or all of your services across all of their network. Um, so, you know, all you have to do is upload one, you know, spreadsheet or, or um, you know, product database. And then right away, all of your products are going to be synced um, across all of the channels that you're on. Um, and if you want to read more about it, um, I will share a link. There's a little bit more about how it works. I, uh, unfortunately, they just came out with the news yesterday and I didn't have enough time to really uh, go into more detail on that, but um, you can you can head to the link if you want to learn more about that. Uh, and the next is a trend that's really been a trend for a while, but I put it in here because it's going to continue to be a trend, um, and that's social media ads. Uh, social media ads, um, you know, I think arguably are the um, the fastest growing service uh, over at um, WebFeed Complete. Um, we've been getting tons of inquiries of, from people about um, how they can get started with ads. And the reason for that is they're affordable, um, they're flexible, and they provide great return on investment. 
So, you know, you can get started with a social media ad for as little as $5 a day that has the opportunity to reach uh, thousands of users. Um, and then they're highly targeted. So, you know, you can target by radius, you can target by um, age, by gender, by uh, industry, by job title, um, you know, household income, uh, whatever it is that you're looking to target, you can, um, you can do with social media advertising. Um, and as such, because you can target, they provide great return on investment uh, because you're not serving your ads to uh, people that may not want to see your ads in the first place. So we're, we're weeding out those irrelevant users and we're only serving ads to people who we want to see our ads. And that's not something you can necessarily do on you know, television or, or traditional radio or print. Um, it is the, the targeting capabilities um, with social media ads. Uh, and then they're flexible. So, you know, if you say, let's go back to the event example, if you have an event coming up that, you know, maybe you want to sell a few more tickets for, um, or, you know, you have a, a promotion that you want to run quickly to, to boost sales a little bit, uh, you can create an ad and get it running and start seeing results, you know, within 15 minutes. Um, and you can have that up and running and then you can turn it off whenever you want. Uh, again, this isn't something you can do with a television ad or um, a radio ad, um, they have you know, much longer lead times and you can't just turn them off um, on and off with the flick of a switch. So you know, that's, that's, again, that's been a trend. Um, it's just gonna, gonna continue to, to grow um, you know, even past 2020. All right, coming towards the end here, um, I wanted to really touch on how social media, um, SEO and, and content creation all really complement one another, uh, excuse me, um, each other. And they really create this full digital um, marketing attack. Um, so, you know, some people, for example, could be doing SEO and maybe they're not doing social media and content or they're doing content and, and not SEO, uh, but they're doing social media. Um, you know, when we talk to prospective clients, we really try and um, make it clear that if you're utilizing all three of these, they all help each other and they really boost uh, your SEO efforts. Um, and you can start to see results much, much faster. Um, and the first way uh, uh, social media helps with SEO is that social media is hands down the best way to promote the content on your website. So it, if you're running an SEO uh, campaign, um, you may or may not know that great content on your website is, you know, one of the top ways um, to increase your uh, rankings. And, you know, if you're posting all this great content on your website, that's really, really good for Google um, and, the, and their rankings. However, um, you may not be getting a lot of views from your, your uh, user base. So, you know, if you post this content on your website, you can then promote that content across social media. Um, and then, you know, the goal being you're going to get more users seeing this content on your site. Um, so, you know, we really want to serve the content that you're creating to people instead of making a user uh, find it themselves. And that leads into the next benefit. Um, which is um, social media can lead to link building. So another really important SEO factor is backlinks. Uh, quickly, if you don't know what a backlink is, it's any link that is not on your website um, that's on another website or another blog that links back to your website or a piece of content on your website. You know, Google sees these as really good ranking factors because it shows that you have a trustworthy website. And while linking to content on your site and social media doesn't count as a backlink in Google's eyes, um, it is still a great way to um, uh, build more backlinks. So by you sharing this content on your social pages, it puts it out into uh, the eyes of potential readers who 
um, are always looking for content to share. So influencers and other industry leaders, if they find your content and then they then share that content on their website or on their blog and link back to you, then that is a backlink. So the goal here is really to share as much as possible um, and that'll give you more opportunities for more backlinks. Um, and then, you know, the caveat here being uh, the content you're creating really has to be authoritative and high quality or else you're not gonna get those shares. Uh, so that's really when, where content creation comes into the fold. Uh, you know, you wanna be creating content on your website for SEO, uh, but it has to be really good, high quality content. And then you want to be sharing that high quality content onto your social profiles. So it's kind of that that's SEO circle uh, where those three pillars are all helping each other um, uh, better rank your website. Um, another way that social media can help in, um, your SEO is with increased uh, page views and page engagement. Um, so if you have really good content on your website and someone found it through social media, the more likely they are um, going to be to hang out on your site and maybe view more of your content. So, uh, you know, on-site time and bounce rates are, are two other important SEO factors. And if someone comes to your site, you know, they clicked on a, a blog post that you shared on social media and it's, you know, a couple sentences long and then they just back right back out because, you know, it's not worth their time. Um, you know, that's, that's not great for your, for your uh, website metrics. Um, however, if you create a really useful piece of content and people really enjoy it, um, and then, you know, they maybe click around to other parts of your website, uh, these are all really important SEO metrics that uh, just really all in the end help your uh, rankings on, on search engines. Um, and then you can also increase the brand awareness. So by being active on social media, um, you know, you're, you're putting your brand in front of more users. Um, and then when a user uh, goes to Google and they're in need of your type of service, you know, they're gonna maybe type in your name because they remember you from social media. And this is gonna grow your, uh, your branded keywords um, in Google search results. Um, and then, you know, the more likely, or excuse me, the more your branded research, uh, keywords grow, uh, you know, the more opportunity for your non-branded keywords um, to, to grow and come up in search engines. So, you know, once these non-branded keywords start to, to grow, Google starts seeing that people trust your brand or they trust your website and that, that authority of, uh, that website authority just continues to grow um, and Google just really likes to see a trustworthy website that, um, that they know is gonna provide relevant content to their users. And I just wanted to make a quick note back to the social ads. Um, you know, if you, if you put $5 a day, if you, for example, post a blog and you put $5 a day into it, um, you know, you can reach thousands of more users and get, you know, uh, you know, a lot more visitors to that blog, which really only uh, increases the, uh, the speed at, you know, at which you can grow your audience. So I just wanted to put that note in there as another way. Uh, it can help your SEO. Um, and then it also um, can show up in uh, your profiles, can show up in Google search results. So all of your social profiles are treated just like any other web page um, in Google's eyes. So, you know, anytime someone does a search for your business um, or your brand, your social profiles are going to show up, you know, you're going to have your website first and then your social profiles, profiles are going to be below that. So you really want to make sure that a, you're there um, and you're, you're taking up most of the search results uh, with your profiles so you don't have a competitor um, you know, able to swoop in into your branded uh, search results. Um, and B, once a user clicks on your profiles, um, they wanna see that you're active. Um, that just builds more trust with the user to see that you're active um, on uh, social networks. Uh, and then also Twitter, for example, um, now is a partnership with Google where anything that a brand tweets, um, you know, also has the opportunity to show up in a Google search. So if something's going on in, in a particular industry and you're, you're tweeting about it, 
there's the opportunity that your profile can show up in the first page of a Google result. Um, and then lastly, YouTube. Um, Google owns YouTube, and that means they're going to show you YouTube videos. So if you have a lot of videos, uh, you want to make sure you're utilizing YouTube uh, first and foremost, but that you're also optimizing your um, YouTube videos um, so that they have the opportunity to show up in search results. All right, so to close it out here, um, just wanted to briefly touch on some tools that we use over here um, on a day-to-day -day basis that help us um, manage all of the information that uh, I just talked about. Uh, so again, these are tools that I, that I personally use and we use in the SEO department. And uh, the first one is Canva. You may or may not have heard about Canva. Um, so what Canva is, is it's a platform where you can um, easily create any type of so social media graphic that you need. Um, so if you uh, see in this screenshot here, you can, you know, you can create uh, email headers, Instagram posts, infographics. Um, you can even do animated social media posts. Uh, and the reason I'm recommending this tool is because it's great for beginners or um, professionals. Um, you know, they offer a lot of templates. So if you're struggling to come up with an idea of a design of, of what to, to put in your social post, Canva is a great way to get some inspiration. And, um, you know, you can even use their, their pre-made templates. Um, so, you know, we use this for a lot of things. We use it for some blog um, headers and, and some other items over here. Um, it is free for the, uh, the basic features, um, but there's a paid option as well if, if you so choose to, to pay for it. Uh, the next one is hashtag expert. So I touched on hashtags and um, the ideal social media posts section and hashtag expert um, is an, app, uh, an iPhone app. There's also versions of this for Android um, as well, um, but this is just the one I use. So it allows you to insert a hashtag that you um, that you want to be shown for. So for example, if I were making a post about website design or web design, I could type web design into this app, uh, push go, and then what hashtag expert is going to do is it's going to spit out a bunch of other hashtags that are also relevant to web design. So if you're having trouble coming up with relevant hashtags, uh, hashtag expert can help you out. And you know, then you know, once it shares the, the, the recommended hashtags, you can go through and choose um, the ones you don't want. Um, and then you can use these hashtags in Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn is really picking up in their use of hashtags uh, lately. Um, you, know, you can even follow specific hashtags. So um, hashtag expert, um, again, is, is just a really useful tool to have in, in your toolkit. Uh, next is Linktree. Um, again, Linktree is just the one we use. There are other similar uh, tools like this. Um, but what Link t uh, Linktree allows you to do is combine all of your relevant links into one landing page um, that can be customized to your liking. Um, so you can routinely swap out these, these links based on whatever campaign or um, whatever you have going on. Um, so we use this in our Instagram profile. So we would just put our link tree link in when a user clicks on that. They are then shown all of our other social media platforms where they can go in and they can follow us on whatever they want. Um, and then also below that, we have some um, interesting blog articles that they may be interested in, or you know, if they want to contact us, they can just simply push the contact us button and then they'll be able to contact us. Um, so again, we use this for a lot of different uh, purposes. You know, we have it in our email signatures. So at the very end of our email signatures, we have a link that says follow us on social media. When they click on it, then they're brought to this page where they have the opportunity to follow us on whatever they want. Uh, just a, just a, another useful little tool to, to utilize. Uh, next is Social Pilots. Um, so this is a social media management platform. There's a, there's a bunch of these out there. Uh, out there. Um, I'll cover a couple more here in a second, but this is just the one we recommend um, and use. So this tool allows us to manage 
multiple accounts for, uh, in our case, multiple channels and multiple clients. Um, you know, if you're just running a single business, um, you know, you can have all of your social profiles into this one single dashboard and then you can go in and you can schedule out all at once your, your um, social media posts across all of these channels. Um, so this allows you to kind of see what you have coming up. Um, you, know, you can drag and drop different posts to different days and different times. Um, so this allows you to organize and really have everything ready to go um, to post ahead of time, um, which is a really big time saver. Um, and then it also, you know, a lot of these tools have really good analytics um, implemented into them. So, you know, you can, um, you, you can build reports and, and gather user analytics as well. Um, so here's just a couple other ones that um, uh, are out there, you know, uh, Social Pilot, again, what we use, Meet Edgar and Hootsuite um, are pretty popular. Uh, Hootsuite and Buffer, are, are they have free options, but they also have paid options. And then if you want a more um, premium, um, advanced uh, product, Sprout Social is probably the leader, uh, the market leader as far as uh, premium paid features goes. Um, it's also fairly expensive, so, um, but I mean, you get what you pay for. So if that's uh, more something you're looking for, that's a, a really great option. Um, and then uh, free stock images and videos. Um, this one's really important actually because most people when they want to find an image, they'll go to Google and do an image search and then they'll use that image maybe on their website or in print materials. Um, and that's a big no-no. Uh, most of these images are copyrighted and you know, you can get into legal trouble or you know, have to pay a big fine to, for the usage rights of that photo. So you want to make sure that you are using images that um, are not copyrighted. Uh, so, you know, Canva, Pexels, Pixabay, Pixjumbo, these are just some sites that um, offer uh, what's called a Creative Commons license. So they're free to use. You can use them wherever you want on your, your uh, blogs, on your social media posts, on, on um, newsletters, uh, wherever you're, you're wanting to use it. Um, and we also have a blog which should be in the chat here um, of 10 other um, useful stock image sites that you can um, feel safe using all of the images on uh, for your social media campaigns. All right, so we covered a lot. Um, I just want to do a quick recap um, and then we can get into some questions. Uh, so we went over, you know, why social media is important for digital uh, success, how to create that initial social media audit, how to create a great social media post, um, some trends you should keep, um, keep tabs on, uh, you know, why social media, SEO, uh, and content creation all really complement each other. And then, you know, just a few tools to kind of, to help you get started and um, to get going. Um, and then finally, you know, I want to come back to this question, um, you know, why isn't your business actively using social media? Um, and you know, I, I asked this question, like I said, to all of our clients or our prospective clients that come in um, and, and are looking to start up social media. And, you know, almost without fail, the number one answer that I always receive is they just ain't got time for it. Um, you know, all of the stuff that we covered takes a lot of time. Um, and, you know, that's really where we can help you. Um, you know, we can take everything off your plate. Um, you know, we help stay on top of the trends. We help uh, stay on top of all of the, the different social updates that help keep your business ahead of your competition. Uh, we provide detailed updates and analytics on what's successful and, and what isn't. And then we can just um, also work autonomous, autonomously or hand in hand with you. Um, you know, we have clients on both ends of the spectrum where, you know, some of them are like, you know, just take it, I trust you and run. And then others want to be you know, really involved um, in, in every step of the process. Um, so we're really flexible in that regard. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to really work um, in part with your SEO and content um, efforts to help you 
build that robust digital marketing presence online. And, and at the end of the day, to you know meet your goal, which is to to grow your business. So um, you know that's that's really the what our services provide. Um, and with that being said, I wanted to get into some other ways that you can help grow that presence. Um, we have some webinars, more webinars coming up on June 3rd. Um, Jeremy is gonna be doing one and he's gonna be talking about some website security and web hosting um, topics. Uh, we call him the wizard because he's just so wizard-like in, in what he can do and, and um, how knowledgeable he is about this security stuff. Uh, make sure you check that one out. He'll probably blow your mind. Um, and then I'll be back on June 17th and talking about social media ad geotargeting um, and how we can really take advantage of uh, targeting social media ads, you know, by radius and by, you know, even down to like event centers or, or convention centers um, and, and some different strategies that go along with that as well. Um, and that is all I have for you. Um, I'm going to stay around for questions if there are any. Um, let me check the chat as well to see if there are some questions. Um, uh, so free version of Social Pilot. Um, there's not a free version of Social Pilot itself. Um, however, there are uh, other products that are free. Uh, I mentioned Buffer has a free version um, and Hootsuite as well. Um, there's limitations as far as how many profiles you can connect, um, but, but they do offer free options um, uh, for their products. All right, any other questions from anyone? Let me take this off. Oh, thank you guys for joining. Hope hope it was uh hope it, hope it was uh, informational and you can use some of the the topics here. Thanks, Diana. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll have a um, Diana. There will be um, um, we'll have it up on YouTube as well as being uh, emailed to you um, as well um, with the link to that uh, video. <laughs> 